Good day everyone. Today we are going to talk about organic compounds. But before we proceed to the discussion, let me test your knowledge by answering these questions. So all you have to do is to read the questions and read the options and choose the letter of the best answer. This is just to test your uh, prior knowledge of the organic compounds. So don't worry, if you make a mistake, that will be fine. Okay? So this is number one. So which of the following statements best describe organic compounds? Choose A, B, C, or D. Second question, how do carbon atoms form many organic compounds? A, B, C, or D. Choose your answer. Number three. What is the maximum bonds can a carbon atom form? Is it 2, 3, 4, or 5? Number 4. This is a situational question. John, a fisherman, asked his son to cook the fish he caught. His son said that the stove has run out of fuel. So John asked his son to buy some so they could start cooking the fish. Which organic compound will the boy buy? Is it gasoline, kerosene, isopropyl alcohol, or lubricating oil? Choose now and last question. Number 5. Which of the following pairs of organic compounds is highly flammable? Is it A. Water and ethyl alcohol? B. Gasoline or acetone? Gasoline and acetone rather. C liquefied petroleum gas and kerosene and D lubricating oil and isopropyl alcohol choose now okay so after answering these questions we are now going to proceed with the actual lesson for today which is what are organic compounds So we begin this discussion by comparing organic compounds and inorganic compounds. What is the difference between organic compounds and organic compounds? Here we go. When we say organic compounds, these are compounds that contain carbon, whereas most inorganic compounds do not contain carbon. The word most means that some inorganic compounds contain carbon. Take a good look at the uh, photo showing the different organic and, and inorganic compounds that we use or encounter in our daily lives or is part of our daily existence. In the photo you can see the following for organic compounds you have DNA, you have nail polish, nail polish remover, candle, paint, soap, and perfume. The examples of inorganic compounds are the following you have salt, diamond, water, carbon dioxide, hydrochloric acid, and calcium carbonate. The chemical compounds of living things are known as organic compounds because of their association with organisms, living organisms, and because they are carbon-containing compounds. In other words, organic compounds are compounds associated with life processes. The branch of chemistry that deals with the study of organic compounds is known as organic chemistry. Now, among the numerous types of organic compounds, there are four major categories found in all living things or living organisms. They are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Now let me give you just a summary of important concepts uh, that relate to these organic compounds. Let's start with carbohydrates. Almost all organisms use carbohydrates as sources of energy. In addition, 
some carbohydrates serve as structural materials. All right, carbohydrates are molecules composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And the ratio of hydrogen atoms to oxygen and carbon atoms is 2 is to 1. There are actually two types of carbohydrates. You have simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. So going back to your lesson in biology, uh, examples of simple carbohydrates are monosaccharides and disaccharides. And an important example of monosaccharide is glucose, which is the basic form of fuel in all living things. In other words, it is metabolized by the body to release its energy. And actually, glucose is the starting material for all cellular respiration and also the main product of photosynthesis. For the uh, complex carbohydrates, an example of that would be polysaccharides. Now, there are two kinds of polysaccharides which are very important in living organism. They are glycogen and cellulose. Glycogen is made up of thousands of glucose units, whereas cellulose is primarily used as a structural carbohydrate. An example of stuff that is composed chiefly of cellulose is wood. And example commercial cellulose products are cotton fabric and paper. Next would be lipids. What are lipids? Lipids are organic molecules composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. They include steroids, waxes, and fats. Okay, next would be proteins. Proteins are among the most complex of all organic compounds. And its basic structure is what we call amino acids. Amino acids are composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen atoms. There are certain amino acids that have sulfur atoms, phosphorus, or other trace elements such as iron and copper. What's the importance of proteins? Number one is that all living organisms depend on proteins for their existence. Why? Because proteins are the major molecules from which living things are constructed. In other words, these are the basic structural unit of the living organism or living organisms. Proteins are also found as supporting and strengthening materials in tissues outside of the cells. Examples of which are bones, cartilage, tendons, and ligaments. These are all composed of proteins. And one of the essential functions of proteins is that of an enzyme. So what is an enzyme? Enzymes are uh, catalysts. They speed up chemical reactions that take place within the cell. The last is nucleic acids. Just like proteins, nucleic acids are very large molecules. And these large molecules are made up of smaller subunits called nucleotides. A nucleotide is consists of a carbohydrate molecule, which is a sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogen base. There are actually two kinds of important nucleic acids. One is DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid, and the other one is RNA or ribonucleic acid. The DNA is found primarily in the nucleus of the cell while RNA is found in bo both the nucleus and the cytoplasm of the cell. In terms of composition or components, DNA and RNA differ. In what way? Number one, DNA contains the uh, carbohydrate deoxyribose. Uh, while RNA contains 
the carbohydrate ribose. And as far as the nitrogen base is concerned, the DNA contains thymine while RNA contains uracil. So why is carbon so special? Carbon is the only element that can form so many different compounds because each carbon atom can form four chemical bonds to other atoms. And because the carbon atom is just the right small size to fit, to fit in comfortably as parts of very large molecules. So in short, its size and its ability to form chemical bonds with other atoms. Which means every carbon atom has six electrons. There are two electrons found in the inner orbit of the carbon atom while the other four are outer electrons that are available for forming bonds with other atoms in other words there are four valence electrons okay now these four valence electrons of carbon atoms can be shared by other atoms that have electrons to share because of this the atomic number of carbon is actually 6. They form covalent bonds. Now, these valence electrons can also be shared by other carbon atoms, which in turn can share electrons with other carbon atoms and so on. And as a result of this, long strings of carbon atoms can be formed. Okay, kind of like bonded to each other like links in a chain. Now, if you look at the periodic table, there's also an element that has four valence electrons. The name of the element is silicon. It's in group 14 of the periodic table. But why is it that carbon is so versatile that it can form bonds with other atoms whereas silicon can't? Reason? Because the atoms of silicon are too large to fit together into as great a variety of molecules as carbon atoms can. That is why carbon atoms are so special. There are actually five reasons why carbon is so special. What are they? Let me enumerate them one by one. Carbon's ability to form long carbon to carbon chain is the first of the five reasons why carbon atoms can form many different carbon compounds. Second reason for carbon's astounding compound forming ability is that carbon atoms can bind to each other not only in straight chains but in complex branchings, kind of like a tree with different branches. They can even join head to tail to make rings of carbon atoms. In short, there is practically no limit to the number or complexity of the branches or the number of rings that can be attached to carbon atoms and hence there's no limit to the number of different molecules that can be formed the third reason is that carbon atoms can share not only a single electron with another atom to form a single bond but it can also share two or three electrons forming a double or triple bond this makes for a huge number of possible bond combinations at different places, making a huge number of different possible molecules. A molecule that differs by even one atom or one bond position is a molecule of a different compound. The fourth reason is that the same collection of atoms and bonds, but in a different geometrical arrangement within the molecule makes a molecule with a different shape and hence different properties. These different molecules are called isomers. And the fifth and the last reason is that all of the electrons that are not being used to bond carbon atoms together into chains and rings can be used to form bonds with atoms of several other elements. The most common element is 
hydrogen, which makes the family of compounds known as hydrocarbons. So there you have it for today. We have described what organic compounds are. We have also compared organic and inorganic compounds and we also have identified the four major organic compounds present in all living organisms on earth and last but not the least we also learned the five reasons that explain why carbon is a very special element like and share for more videos and don't forget to subscribe see you next meeting bye